Hello fellow tea adventurers and welcome to day one of Around the World in 80 Teas. I'm so glad that you joined me and I really hope you're going to enjoy this journey. Before we get started, there is something that I need to clarify. What is it that I'm talking about when I'm talking about tea? Tea has become so popular around the world that all the words that go along with it have been adopted into everyday language and mean slightly different things to slightly different people. If you happen to wander down the tea and coffee aisle of your local supermarket, you will likely see things on the shelf at, such as English breakfast tea and Earl Grey tea. But you'll also see things like peppermint tea, chamomile tea, sleepy tea. Some of these are teas, and some of these are not. Some of them are actually what are called tisans. And this is something to just be aware of. In this series, I'm going to be talking about the true tea, and that is anything made from the Camellia sinensis plant. Now, the Camellia sinensis plant is a single species of plant within which there are two varieties which are used for producing tea. And those two varieties give us six different types of tea. White, green, yellow, oolong, black, and pu'er, which is fermented tea. All six of those teas can be made from both varieties of the tea plant. And it's to do with how they're processed after harvesting as to how we get the six varieties of tea. But the thing they all share in common is that they all come from that single species, Camellia sinensis. Everything else is not tea and is not going to be explored in this series. So, with that being said, let's crack on, grab a brew, and let's go on a tea adventure. Our journey begins in southwest China. Now, although tea is actually indigenous to southwest China, northeast India, and northern Myanmar and Vietnam, it's actually Southwest China where our story begins. And we need to use our imagination a little bit because let's face it, I'm not a Time Lord, I don't have a TARDIS, so I can't just magically whoosh, whoosh, whoosh back to ancient China. <laughs> so we find ourselves some almost 4,000 years ago in China. And from what we can kind of surmise about customs that have been going on for a long period of time, that have been written about in ancient texts, it's fair to assume that the very first consumption of tea was actually picking the fresh tea leaves straight off the bush and chewing them. See, what people had discovered is that the Camellia sinensis plant, for all the fact that it looks pretty much like a really ordinary shrub with very ordinary, very small flowers, contains a very, very special secret, and that is it has caffeine. Now, for those of us who have had a good cup of tea or a strong cup of coffee, we know that caffeine can revive us, it can keep us alert, it can make us full of energy, and that can sustain us through some of the more mundane tasks of life. It's quite easy to assume that chewing was the first thing anyone did with leaves simply because the way humans explored the world and found out what was good to eat was by trying things. And this is something that quite possibly we've been doing for tens of thousands of years with tea since that region of the world was populated by people some 50,000 years ago. Now, I do not have a Camellia sinensis plant, more's the pity. That is something I hope to rectify at some point, and as and when I do get my tea plant, I will definitely revisit this subject. But what I do have is some green tea. Now, green tea is probably the closest I'm going to get to picking some tea leaves off a bush, um, simply because green tea is not allowed to oxidise. So it's picked and then it's immediately heat treated to stop any sort of oxidisation from going on, so it stops it from breaking down. It's something that I purchased dried green tea, that's generally how it arrives, and so overnight, I added a little wee bit of water to my tea, just let it sit to try and rehydrate the leaves. And this is the result. As you can see, 
it's a slightly mushy bowl of, well, leaves. It smells very nice though, it smells like fresh cut hay. And basically people would chew this. So basically I'm going to chew some. Now I've never done this before and reports kind of that have been written down, not at the time, but not long after, would indicate that tea when chewed is actually incredibly bitter, however very good for you. So I am a little bit um, worried about what this is going to taste like, but here goes in the name of exploration. Yep, that's quite bitter. I mean... Okay. Oh, I'd imagine that's what eating grass tastes slightly like. Yeah, that's quite... <laughs> oh, and it's really chompy and chewy as well. Like, you really have to kind of mash down on it, um, which isn't surprising because Camellia sinensis is an evergreen plant. It has quite waxy leaves in order to protect itself. And the Camellia sinensis sinensis plant, which is what would have originally been sampled in southwest China and originally been used. It can put up with temperatures down as far as minus 10 degrees, so its leaves have to be pretty hardy to put up with that. Yeah. Don't think I'm going to be repeating this experiment. That is just... A whole bunch of tea stuck in my teeth. Mm-mm. Now I do also have here some white tea which I also hydrated. White tea isn't quite as fresh as green tea, it hasn't been high heat treated but also it hasn't been allowed to oxidise for a very long period of time. So this would be more akin to tea that had been plucked off the tree and then just kind of left for a little bit, nothing really done with it. Um, this is the white tea that I have. This is the resulting bowl of slightly mushy leaves. And I figured I might as well give this a go as well. I know I'm not going to try it with black tea. I'm not going to try it with oolong. Those are very specific processes that the tea goes through after harvesting. But green tea is about as close as I can get to fresh tea without actually having a tea plant. And then white tea, the next best after that. I figured I'd give both of them a go. And after the delights of green tea and chewing on that, I'm not sure I necessarily want to do this, but in the name of exploration, I am going to wish me luck. Oh God, that's horrible. Oh. Oh no, that is not pleasant. Oh. Oh, that is way more bitter. That is just, ha, oh, that is way more bitter. That is like gone off grass. Oh, that is not fun. Ah. Oh. <laughs> no. No, no, no. Definitely the fresher the better. Definitely the fresher the better. Ugh. No, no. Oh, that's going to take a while to... Oh, that hits you right at the back of your throat. <laughs> I don't know if you ever, as a child, ate a dandelion leaf. I grew up in the countryside of England. I have definitely eaten a dandelion leaf in my time. Tastes like that. Mm-mm. 
no, no. The fresher the better, definitely. Now the first person accredited with actually finding tea and using tea is a former Chinese emperor called Shen Nong. Um, I do apologise for my horrific pronunciation. I can't promise it's going to get any better as we go along. Um, but he was famed for trying lots of different medicines, finding out about all the different plants and how they worked. Legend has it that out of the 100 plants that he tried, 72 of them made him ill and he rectified the toxic effects by chewing on tea after consuming them. So tea has legendary kind of um, properties of getting rid of toxins. And what he also found is that it also kept him very alert and awake, bright and energetic throughout the day. And for any of you who drink tea on a regular basis, you will know this to be true. And that's because of its oh so lovely caffeine content. Now, there is also the story that he didn't just discover tea as in chewing tea or consuming tea, but that actually he was the person to be accredited with brewing tea. The legend has it that he was resting under a tea shrub and he was brewing up some boiling water in order to make his meal. It didn't state whether morning afternoon meal, but to make his meal. As he rested there, some leaves blew down off the tree, landed in his water, and he noticed that after several minutes, there was a fragrant smell coming from his, um, I would call it a cauldron, I don't know what the technical term is, but cauldron saucepan um, that was over his fire. He also noticed that the water changed colour slightly, and he decided to consume said beverage to find out what its effects might be, and found it to actually be, although a little bitter, not unpleasant. We do have reports about some of the ways that tea or medicinal herbs were prepared, which were handed down by word of mouth and then written down at a later date. Now, this is something that obviously when we hand things down by word of mouth over and over and over again, things can get a little lost in translation. They can also be changed subtly as each person does it a slightly different way. And so the instructions that we have for how tea was prepared some three and a half thousand years ago may not be entirely accurate. However, they are the best that we have in terms of helping us on our journey. And so I am going to give it my very best guesstimate and I am going to follow what evidence I can find. And I'm going to start us off on this journey with the very first cup of tea.
adventurers we are back and we have da, 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 t1 of our ATTs um, as you will see from the footage all I did was I took a cup of filtered cold water put it in a saucepan added the fresh tea leaves um, and literally put it over a flame and boiled it up um, I did then strain it now this is unlikely to have occurred back in ancient China. Uh, the accounts from later on um, do seem to indicate that leaves were just left in tea to settle. Um, but given that I've just consumed two rather not great tasting mouthfuls of tea, I'm giving myself this one off and I put it through a strain. So um, here we go. This is not ancient Chinese tea, but it's as close as I can get it with the facilities that I currently have. Cheers. It's still very, very, very hot. That's actually really quite nice. Definitely not green tea. Now I know I did make the leaves from green tea, um, but it doesn't. It definitely doesn't taste the same as actually brewing up those green tea leaves from their kind of dried state as I would usually brew green tea. Um, this is quite. This is good. Still very hot. <laughs> very fresh like really refreshing like really really clean tasting I mean, there's no very very low in tannins so yeah no, I'm just gonna drink the whole thing you know stick around if you want to this is we're just having a, a cup of between friends now swallow really loudly mm. and this is good I'm really just I'm just gonna you know kick back enjoy this is uh yeah I'm pretty darn pleased with that I am pretty darn pleased with that that is yeah that is a good copper So, that's it for our first video. We have officially um, struck down our first tea of our Around the World in ATT's adventure. We are around about now kind of 3,000-ish years ago. Um, in our next video, we're going to be fast-forwarding just a few hundred years, and we're going to be looking at how tea progressed. And... Yeah, I hope you will enjoy it. I am going to be using some of the fresh tea that I have created for this video for the next video. So after I'm done filming this, I am going to go and prep that tea um, for our next foray. But you will see that footage in our next video. So I hope you have enjoyed this first little adventure into the world of tea. Um, if you feel like giving it a go, then please do. If you would like to follow along, I'm putting some resources down below in the description box as to where you can source teas from. Now, these are not companies I am in any way affiliated with. Uh, none of the videos are at all sponsored or anything like that. They are simply um, companies that I've previously bought tea from and I've had good tea and good service. So, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy. And I will also put down the resources that I used for this video with regards to research, because for those of you like myself who like to geek out over these things, please do feel free to go and do your own reading and your own research. Until next time, fellow steepers and stitchers, cheers. Bye.